Okay, here's another in our series of synoptic shorts. We take a topic and think about some possible micro ma macro aspects to the question. So this one is to do with micro and macro policies to achieve financial stability in the UK. Uh, reforms to the financial sector to make it more stable are seen as uh, help, a way of helping boost long-term growth and also improve income equality. So it could be uh, a synoptic focus. Just before we look at some examples, it's important to make a distinction between different types of regulation in financial markets. Uh, micro prudential regulation looks at individual financial institutions, banks, payday lenders, insurance companies, and so on, and, and tries to ensure they remain solvent and that the people who make deposits with them, savers, are protected. That's micro prudential regulation, whereas macro prudential regulation is basically any policy to sustain, uh, make the entire financial system more resilient, more able to absorb bad news. So, for example, prevent too much credit overexpansion, big macro supervision of the entire banking system so they maintain sufficient capital buffers. So here are some examples of micro and macro policies you might want to analyse and then evaluate in your answer. On the micro side, one policy has been or could be to increase the contestability in the banking system, to encourage more challenger banks to enter the market, perhaps to reduce the monopoly or oligopoly power of existing banks. So, for example, Metro Bank is perhaps one of the best known. That was launched in 2010. It's got about 40 branches across the UK. Virgin Money, Aldermore, one or two others. Quite a few online banks have emerged. Second micro policy could be an intervention in the market to introduce a cap on the interest rates, for example, charged by the payday lenders for unsecured loans. So that would be a classic intervention to address monopoly power in the market and also to, to cut the risk of poor families being exploited. Increased capital requirements for banks could be a micro policy. So you take specific banks and require them to increase their capital buffers, asset to loans ratios. And of course, it's designed to, to reduce systemic risk. On the macro side, monetary policy has a key part to play in maintaining financial stability, often missed out by students. So the use of interest rates, for example, the Bank of England or another central bank might decide to increase interest rates to tighten monetary policy if they think that credit is growing too quickly, if they think there's too much household debt, and perhaps to bring down the, the annual growth of house prices. So that would be a macro policy designed to maintain financial stability. You could also use fiscal policy to maintain financial stability. So some people are proposing that the government introduces a new tax, a so-called Tobin tax, otherwise known as a Robin Hood tax, on financial transactions. So every share deal, every currency trade, there will be a very small tax, very small percentage tax. And that is designed more widely to raise a lot of money, but to, to reduce the amount of speculative trading in markets. Some people think that speculation uh, causes financial instability. And you could also have a, a, an economy-wide control on bank lending. So a macro policy would be to introduce a minimum cash to deposits ratio for the banking system designed to increase their liquidity. Good example to use is in the mortgage market where the UK's Financial Policy Committee, the FPC, have brought in a mortgage loan to income cap which limits the number of mortgages, home loans, where they're lending four and a half times or higher of people's incomes. And that limit is now only 15% of a lender's new mortgage lending. So that's really designed to just to put a cap on those big, big, very highly leveraged mortgage loans. So lots of things that you can think about here. This is a good synoptic topic, the micro and macro policies to promote financial stability in the UK.